Okay, we're going to go to part two of uh, the GitHub overview, but first... I mean, that OB6 just sounds so good. Okay, so for this part, I'm just going to skip, you know, the slideshow, and um, I'm going to open up GitHub Desktop. I'm going to talk about using GitHub. So I'm going to assume at this point that you have made a GitHub account, and you've got GitHub Desktop downloaded, and you have affiliated or logged in through preferences and logged into your GitHub account here. So you go preferences and sign in just right there. Okay. Um, let's do one thing really quickly to demonstrate a basic usage of uh, GitHub with respect to vertical projects. So I'm going to quickly load up our studio. Let's say I wanted to make a new vertical project. I'm going to assume you've got vertical installed already. Um, if you saw the, the overview, um, the very first video, you'd want to have the dev tools package installed. This one, dev tools, you can install it by going like this, dev tools, click install. And then, I guess I'll just <laughs> repeat myself again, that's okay. Um, you would go to install vertical, and if you're at the vertical website, you can just run this line right here, just like that. Make sure you're connected to the internet, and you can have vertical install into our studio. Then uh, you would want to restart our studio. You'll know vertical is installed when you go to make a new project. And if you're not working in projects in our studio, you know, projects make so much sense to work in. When you use vertical, you'll be working in a project situation. So I'm going to click make a new project, new directory, scroll down, vertical research project. And I'm just going to initialize it with all this basic stuff. I'm going to call this uh, GitHub Basics 2. Sure. There we go. Do a create. We are now in a folder called GitHub Basics 2. I told it to go on my desktop, so there it is. And uh, this is actually a Git folder like the ones we were talking about. You can tell it's a Git folder in our studio because there's a, a Git tab here. Great. And I think in the very first video, I showed how easy it was to um, build a website using the package down functionality through vertical. In this template, remember, the manuscript folder has a Papa Jaw template in there. This slides folder has a, I think it's a iOS slides template. The vignettes have a, a well, a, a vignette template, but, or you could use this for just a supplementary material. So there's some stuff that's already here. If we run the command vertical, build vertical, uh, this takes all of our assets and puts them together into a basic website like this, where people could access the manuscript and the materials and so on. Uh, this is your bare bones vertical project website that you get at the end. And where is this? Notice it's on my computer. The file path says file. And this particular document is the index.html document that lives in the docs folder that lives inside the GitHub Basics 2 folder on my desktop. So if we were to go into our studio and take a look, GitHub Basics 2, docs folder, this is where the web page got built. Great. So we haven't even used GitHub or GitHub Desktop at all. All we've done so far is built a basic vertical project template and it's on our computer. Let's change that. Let's get this onto my GitHub account or your GitHub account. 
So first of all, if I was to go to GitHub, it's going to log me in automatically. And if I was to go look at my repositories, I would see a bunch of different ones here. And um, this one called GitHub Basics 2, it doesn't exist here, right? GitHub Basics, I mean, it's on my computer. It's not on GitHub. That's the problem. So let's get this from my computer onto GitHub. We're going to use GitHub Desktop for this. The first thing we want to do uh, in this case is we're going to add an existing repository to GitHub Desktop. So let's do that. Add it. I've got to choose it. I've got to go find it. So this is in my desktop, and it is right here. GitHub Basics 2. Open that up, and it will allow me to add this into GitHub Desktop. And you could find it by scrolling down. And it's listed this under Other currently. Um, notice that when I clicked on it, I can see these changes. Um, and these changes reflect things I've done to these files since they were made. Um, I'm just going to call this first stuff. Uh, you could call, you could use better description, descriptions to describe your changes. I'm going to commit that. And wh when you make the commit, what is that actually, what's actually happening here? Well, um, you are creating a history of versions. So right now, uh, you can go into the history and check out the first stuff commit. And these will preserve all the things that were changed uh, in the files at this moment in time. So again, at this point, this folder, it's on my desktop. It's nowhere else. And it is a Git folder. And I've just made a commit to it. Great. But what I really want to do is I want to publish it to GitHub. And it's pretty easy. I bet you can guess. You just press this button. I can give it a little description. This will show up on the github.com website. Um, uh, a test. I'm just, that's all this is. Uh, I'm going to unclick this private thing. I want this to be a public repository. If you're going to be using uh, a GitHub repository to serve a website, I think you have to make it public. Otherwise, people won't be able to see it. But this is it. Press publish, and it's going to do the upload. And we can just stand around and wait. And it's done. Great. So there's a convenient little option to view on GitHub. Let's do it. Click it. There we are. We're now looking at the GitHub Basics 2 repository in my main GitHub thing. I don't know what you call that. So that's cool. Now what? Um, well, the thing I wanted to show you, first, all, for, first of all, is just that uh, we know the website that we built. The files for that are in the docs folder right here. Uh, remember, we looked at the index.html file. And if we looked at that right here on uh, github.com, we would see the text of this file. We won't see it being displayed as a website. So we're seeing the source code. The br when the browser loads this, it will render this as a website. What's really cool about GitHub repos, and I just love this about them, is that on this side, you can store the source code. But if you have a website, uh, dot, uh, website HTML files and stuff you need for websites, if you have it in a docs folder, GitHub will also render them as a website for you. And to turn that on, you go to settings, scroll down a bit, Click, uh, find GitHub pages, find master, and I'm going to choose the docs folder. And I'm saying render things inside the docs folder as a web page for me. Press save. You can scroll down again. And what you're going to see here 
is the URL that you need to go to your, your vertical project website. So we could click it, but actually it takes a 20, 30 seconds usually for it to render. And instead of going there immediately, I'm gonna go back. I like to add this to the website option here on the front of the source code side of the GitHub repository. So when I'm using this, I know that I can look at the source code if I, if I want to, but I also know because this is a vertical project, there should be a really nice uh, package down created website for me to look at. Let's see if it's there. Hey, cool. So this is now on the internet. And if you went to this URL right now, you would see it too. Wow. But I don't know for how long because I probably will delete this. This, uh, this is just an example to show some of the pipeline. Um, and I think it's worth seeing an example of the pipeline before you start using it. So just to review, the pipeline here was that we were in our studio. We created a bunch of we, well, we initialized a vertical project, and that created this folder called GitHub Basics 2, and there's all these files in it. And then we added it to the GitHub Desktop app. We committed our changes. We published it on github.com. Now uh, we can have both a repository sharing all of the source code as well as a nice website on the other side that could be used to share finished products. Like for example, someone could come here and, and download the paper or something like that. Okay, let's do a few more things in terms of just using GitHub and getting a feel for what's going on here. Um, okay, what I, what I wanna do, I wanna note that I've loaded up GitHub Desktop, and we're, we've clicked on the GitHub Basics 2 repository. Okay, this is cool. So let's do something. Let, let's go pick a document. I'm gonna go into the vignettes. We'll talk about vignettes later. But let's open up this uh, sample vignette called Supplementary Analyses. Um, and let's add some text. I mean, we could add it's in our markdown document. As we'll learn, we can add text. We can add R code to make things uh, like a histogram or something. Um, there's all sorts of text we can add. I've just added a few things. Um, for reasons I'll elaborate later, I'm just gonna hashtag this thing out because uh, it's not gonna work right now. Okay, so we've got some text we added. Uh, notice I, I press save. This was read, now it's not. So I've saved these changes in this file. This is a text file, an RMD file. And well, what are the consequences of me doing that for this Git folder that I'm working in? Well, notice something's appeared up here in the Git tab. It seems like I've made some changes to the som.rmd file, and indeed I did. If we look at the GitHub desktop app, we'll see that the changes are recorded here too. So there's been one changed file, just this one, and you can look over here and you can see what the changes are. So for example, I deleted, well, actually what I did was I added a hashtag in front of there. So this was previously what was there, now it's this, and then I, in green I added all this other stuff. So cool. Um, if I was to, uh, I'll just quickly do this. Instead of using a vertical function, I'm gonna do use the package down function to build articles, which I happen to know will build the R markdown files in the vignettes folder. These are little details you, you'll learn about later. So we just did that. Um, and let's think about what must have happened there. 
uh, we'll learn about these details. But what, what I'll say now is the, the R markdown file was compiled into an HTML file and that file went into the docs folder. So if, if I'm correct about that, when we go look at GitHub desktop for our RStudio, we should see that there are some new files. And indeed, look in the docs folder, in the, uh, there is now a new HTML file. So those things were created when we, when we ran the build articles function. In any case, I'm just pointing out that uh, as we make new things, change our files, make new files inside of this GitHub Basics 2 folder, which is a Git folder, all of our changes are recorded. Um, if we want to save the current um, changes uh, as, a, as a particular version, we then need to make a commit. Um, so here I could say uh, added supplemental file. I don't know, terrible description. Uh, commit that and now we'll go to our history and we'll see, yep, we've got two commits now. Great. Um, and again, these changes, they only exist uh, on the local computer. So I'm just going to show you some tricks here. If you were to say like, oh, what does my website look like right now? I just built it. Let's take a look. You could go into the docs folder. You could find the index.html file, which is going to be your front page. And you could say, oh, let's view that in the web browser. And here we go. We're viewing it. Now, I just made some changes to the supplementary file. And yep, cool. I can see the text I added. I can see that I made a histogram. And we're starting to do some work in R Markdown now. It's pretty cool. However, these changes are, are local. They're on my hard drive. They are not up yet on github.com. Uh, we could verify that if we wanted. We could go to that repository, click it here. So now we're on the GitHub side. If we look at supplementary now, see it's not loading those changes. To merge or to push our local changes up to GitHub, we just use GitHub desktop and just press the push button. And that will um, take our local copy, which has newer things, and add those newer things to the github.com copy. Um, you wait a couple seconds. I don't know how long this takes. It probably takes a one synthesizer song long. Maybe something like that, I don't know. And then if we reload the page on github.com, we can see an update. All right. Um, so that's, you know, actually gets you pretty far in terms of using GitHub with vertical. Um, you're basically going to be working in our studio, adding to stuff in these files. Uh, when you want to put it up on GitHub, just go here, commit your changes, and press the push button, and you're good to go. I want to talk about some other things you can do. So let's do that and try to move a little bit more quickly. I'm going to delete some of these tabs. I want to point out that you can make changes if you wanted to on github.com. So let's go here. Uh, We're in our repository and I don't know, let's say, let's say I was like, I really want to change these the text that I added, I, I don't like that it says add some text. I want to delete that. So I can use the edit uh, pencil thing. I go in here, delete that text. Uh, again, it's going to want you to describe the changes you made. So I'm just going to say delete something. And you're going to commit these. Now, what we've done is we've committed these changes to the Git repo up 
on the cloud, right? So if I go to my local copy, this thing's still there. It hasn't been updated yet. So just like we can push up our changes, if we change things up on GitHub, we can bring them back down and force those changes onto our local copy. Um, so when you log into GitHub Desktop, you can see now it says fetch origin. So let's do that. I'm going to do the fetching of the origin, and it wants to um, pull one commit from the origin. That's because there's a new thing up there that's different from what's going on here on my computer. So I'm going to say, yep, let's pull that down. Great. And actually, you can kind of see what happened. It pulled down the newer version of this file, which had the, that line deleted. And if, if you saw it, just it just disappeared there. So that's pretty neat. Um, you should know that you can use GitHub folders outside of the context of RStudio very easily if you want to make a new folder on your computer that use, uses Git version control. You could just use GitHub Desktop and say, create new repository, go somewhere on your, you know, for example, test Git. Um, it's going to be called test Git. <laughs> you could give it a little description, a test. Um, actually, there's a moment to mention something. I'm about to create a new folder on my computer, so where should I do that? I mean, I'm going to do it on the desktop because that I use the desktop as a kind of scratch pad. It gets pretty cluttered, but it's just a lot of stuff there, and I delete it all the time. So I don't really want to see this folder ever again. I'm just going to create it there for purposes of demonstration. Uh, but I think it's a good habit to um, think about where you, you want your your files for projects that are going to have a longer lifespan. Um, think about where to have them on your computer. Um, for me, I ended up creating a GitHub folder uh, under my main, with on, a, on a Mac, you know, I've got a Mac crump thing. And so I made a GitHub folder right there, and I put my GitHub repository folders in this folder so I know where they all are. I mean, I'll admit I also have lots of GitHub folders all over the place, and the problem with that is I have no idea where they are. Uh, so that's annoying. So I like to have them in one place. You, you know, you do you. Anyways, back to here. Okay, so what, what we're doing is we're just creating um, initialize with readme. We're just creating a folder, and that's it. This folder is not on GitHub. It's on my computer. It's right here. Where'd it go? Mm, GitHub Basics 2. Nope. What did I even call this? Uh, oh, there it is. Test Git. Right there. If we look for this, we'd see that it's just a folder with it's going to have one readme file in it. Uh, this is the kind of thing you could open up in a text editor and change or whatever. And and certainly, any any anytime you make a change, um, like you just changed a file in a Git folder and saved it, we can see those changes there. If I was to, I don't know, let's say. Uh, let's say I open up a text ed edit and I make some file and I save it into this folder called test git. And I'm going to just give it like that name there. Again, I've added something new into this folder and GitHub Desktop's going to pick that up and it's going to say, yep, there's a new file in there. Great. So I just, I just wanted to kind of generalize this notion that we've got a Git folder here. When we add things into it, the changes will get picked up. We can commit our changes with some notes. And there we go. We've got Git version control going on. And, you know, I, d I don't want to save. I don't want to 
share this folder with anybody. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to not publish it onto github.com because I don't want to, right? But if, if I really wanted you to be able to download these two files because of open science or whatever, you know, I would publish it on GitHub. It would be pretty easy because I could just press this button. All right. Um, what else to talk about with GitHub? I want to say a few things more broadly about using GitHub in the context of collaborative work. So for example, if we went over to the vertical repository, uh, this is the code for the vertical R package. Uh, one thing is we can use a GitHub repository to share R packages. So this is an R package. It's, and if you, um, you can download it and install it through our studio from GitHub, which is really great. Uh, when Matty Vore and I uh, put this together, we use the GitHub issues tab a lot uh, as a way to talk back and forth about the project we were developing. So if you're not familiar with GitHub, a lot of times when you go here to a GitHub repo, you'd be looking at source code for some software project. And the issues tab is usually used for people to report bugs or feature requests or various other things. Um, we used uh, and well, I mean, so here's these, here's two issues. We haven't solved them yet. So, uh, this one, we need to change the version number. Some, it's like, we definitely need to do that. Um, and we've had some discussions about things we can add. Um, when we've, uh, ha opened up an issue, had some discussion about it and thought we resolved the issue, we get to close the issues, which is great. It feels really nice to close the issues. It's sort of like checking off on a to-do list. Um, and what, what's kind of cool is it saves your, your discussion for posterity. So this is kind of like a record of the project uh, if anyone was curious to read it. Um, I'll just give an, another quick example. This worked out really well for a project I was working on two summers ago, maybe. Um, this is sort of pre- vertical for me, so I can find it, where I was thinking about similar kinds of ways to share a psych project on a GitHub repository with a website and stuff like that. Um, so, so this one has a paper, it's got a website, here's the paper, and we actually used package down to make this, you can uh, read the paper and the script and stuff like that. Um, so this was a bit of a predecessor of the vertical idea, um, but certainly here is a record in the, in the issues tab of some of the discussions that me and, um, Nick and Walter who worked on this project with me had when we talked about the project. And I th again, I thought it was just really helpful in terms of organizing the project. Um, if you look across the top here, there's lots of other things that you could make use of on GitHub. You could write a wiki, a wiki page for documentation. There's, um, well, you can actually look at insights and see how many people are looking at your GitHub repositories if you want. Uh, I won't really go too much into this aspect, which is a really powerful way to collaborate so if you have a bunch of people working on the same stuff, uh, you can set it up so that um, everybody has their own local copy of a repo. There might be like a master copy somewhere and uh, team members can make requests uh, to have their changes on their version be accepted and pulled into the master version. And this can be an, an interesting way to facilitate commenting and discussion about changes that team members want to make uh, to some project. And this is very common in software development. I don't know if people are using this very often in the context of say writing a, an academic paper, uh, but it could, it could be done. 
Uh, another thing I'll mention I is it's pretty easy to have multiple branches of your project. So for example, um, we have a master branch for a vertical and we have a development branch. Our hope is that the master branch always has working code. And if we want to make changes uh, to address some issue, we will make those changes to the development branch, make sure it's working, and when we're ready, merge the development branch into the master branch. Um, and this is a, it's nice to be able to have these layers. For example, uh, just to kind of expand some of the ways in which I'm using GitHub, you know, we wrote a statistics OER uh, psych stats textbook using R Markdown and Bookdown. Where is it? It's called statistics. Here it is. Yeah, so you could download this and compile it on your computer and serve your own version of this using basically the same same ideas. Um, here again, all the here's the here's the textbook, and all the HTML for this textbook are in the docs folder, just like in a vertical project. And of course, we've enabled the setting for GitHub Pages to work here. Uh, and we're working in R Markdown, and we, yeah, compile this book. Um, this summer, I've almost had a chance to start revising it. I've been making plans to add some revisions. And so what I did was, uh, is there any other branches here? I haven't, I haven't actually uploaded it. On my local copy, I've got a development branch that I'm working on and so that I can both have a stable version of the textbook out, out there and work on my changes separately and I can kind of merge these things later. It's a nice little aspect of GitHub. Okay, well this is getting on, but there's a few more little things I wanted to mention, things you might run into. Uh, they have to do with cloning, forking, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so, yeah, let's just keep going. Sorry, sorry if I'm losing the thread here, but I, I'm going to talk about various ways to create repositories and some of the consequences of doing it the various different ways. So, how about we go and create a repository on github.com that I don't have made on my own laptop yet. So, just like we can create repositories from GitHub desktop or from our studio, we can go right on to GitHub and create one. So I'm gonna do uh, GitHub originate. Sure, terrible name, little description. I'm gonna initialize this with the readme. I'm gonna create the repository. And now we're just doing, we're creating a Git folder on GitHub and here it is. There's basically nothing in here except for a readme file. So if, if you wanted to start a GitHub folder this way, you could totally do that. Um, you could also then go to GitHub desktop and you could say, I'd like to clone the repository. And it's going to give you a list of options from github.com. You could go search for that one. What did we call it? GitHub originate. So if I clicked clone, then I would copy this in to some place on my computer. So in this case, we go to the desktop. Let's just do that. And um, what's nice about this process is we're now connected between github.com and my computer. For example, if I went into GitHub originate, made some changes to the readme file. Uh, 
committed those changes, pushed them back, then they would get updated here. I'm kind of dwelling on this, and so they, they just got updated. I'm dwelling on this because you can certainly run into situations where you've made a Git folder, but it's only in one place. It's, it's not connected to github.com. Um, and if you're running into problems uh, connecting some, something that way, um, think about the, the way that you're making these things in the first place. Um, let's go find somebody else. Let's go find, how about Nick Broseski? He uh, just left my lab a year ago and where is Nick? I'm still not very good at following people. There he is. Okay. So let's say I wanted to steal something from Nick. I mean, borrow or just copy some of Nick's great work. And how could you do that? Well, you could go look at the repositories he has. And let's say I want this uh, simple Stroop demo. Um, one way I could get it would be to just download the zip file. If I do that, uh, I'm, I'm getting a folder and it's gonna be in my downloads and it's gonna be a regular folder and it's gonna contain all of these things. And that's great. So that's one way I could get this stuff. Um, another way could be to fork it. So I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm logged into my account, right? But I am looking at Nick's account and let's say I wanna copy this to my account, I could press fork. So I'm gonna choose to copy there, it's forking it. And now, simple Stroop demo is one of my repositories. So that's pretty cool. Again, it's on github.com, not on my computer. If I wanted access to this on my computer, I would have to, for example, I could say open with GitHub desktop. This is cool. Yes, I want to allow this to open. Um, so when you're doing this, you're again, you're going to be downloading a GitHub repository to your computer. You gotta choose where you wanna put it. I'll just put this one on the desktop. And at this point, this message comes up. It's, uh, worth reading this message because it, it helps us understand something that will go on down the road. So the question is, do you wanna to contribute to the parent project um, or do you wanna use this for your own purposes? Um, see, when you fork a copy, so I'm gonna just gonna keep this top part, I'm gonna say, yes, I will contribute to the parent project. Press continue. All right, so now I've got um, this, this thing on my computer. If I press show in Finder, I could see here's the files. Great. If I now go make a change to these files, I don't know, what should I do? Um, actually, I'm not gonna change any of those files. I don't wanna mess them up. Uh, I'm going to create just a file called um, I'm going to call it readme.md. So I made a new file. There it is. I commit that to the master. I pushed it up into my repository. I'm going to reload this. We should see readme. There it is. So I added that now, but notice it's saying this branch is one commit ahead of nbrosowski master. 
So there's a thing that's going on here, which is that not only is my local copy connected to this copy on my GitHub account, but the copy on the GitHub account is connected to Nick's copy. So I can pass changes to my copy. And if I want to later, for example, I could say, make a pull request. And I'm not going to do this because if I did this, I would alert Nick and I would be asking Nick to accept my changes and for him to bring those changes into his repository. But the changes I made were silly, so I don't want Nick to pull those things in or even ask him to. So the reason I brought all of this up, um, or did I, did I already make the pull request? Uh, I hope not. I'll just let him see this is thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I did. Um, let's, let's, I'll cross my fingers that I didn't actually make the pull request. Uh, but this is why I bring this up. Just to, s just to note that when you use the fork option, you're going to establish this connection between your copy of the repo and the, the originating repository. And a lot of times forking is done because when you create your own version, you intend to make some changes and, and uh, request that they be pulled back into the main one. Uh, if you want to copy somebody's code and not have it be connected this way, uh, I suggest you just make your own empty repository with a unique name, download the files, and then just copy them into that folder. And then you'd be uh, well set to have uh, an independent version that's not connected by this forking process. All right, I think that's all I have to say about GitHub right now. Uh, I hope that that gave some examples about using it um, and that the, the main takeaway is when we're going to be doing this with vertical, we're going to be mostly working in our studio making changes here. And when we're satisfied with our changes, we just go to GitHub desktop, commit them and press push. And that's, that's basically it. All right, we'll do some uh, synthesizer out. <laughs>